Is this the appointed time? Well, I don't mean this, but although it's very close to midnight, but I mean with this, the upcoming Feast of uh, Trumpets, uh, also known as um, Rosh Hashanah. Now, Rosh Hashanah means uh, beginning of the year eh, or new year. Um, the better word is uh, Yom Teruah or Feast of Trumpets. It's an appointed time. Uh, we looked at that in many videos, also recently uh, made some short videos about it. Uh, it's an appointed time on which we expect something to happen um, every year. And um, that's not a strange thing, because uh, I have to remind you that uh, uh, Jesus fulfilled major um, events on the exact days, on the appointed times, the Moadim, as it is called in Hebrew. Uh, he was crucified on uh, Pesach, on Passover. Uh, he was in the grave during the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread, Hak, uh, ha Hamatzes. And he rose from the grave uh, on the Feast of First Fruits, Yom Habikurim. He fulfilled it on the exact days. And then, of course, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples when they spoke in tongues on the day of Pentecost, or rather Shavuot, um, which was another appointed time. And so the next feast uh, or appointed time is Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets, which is just a few days away. And what do we expect there? We expect there the rapture. Now, there are um, many uh, reasons to think and to expect that this will be uh, the, the day, the time. Um, one of the reasons I gave a few videos ago uh, regarding 2030 as the possible year of the, uh, the return, the second coming of Jesus Christ, which means that the tribulation is the seven years prior to that, which means it has to start this year, which means as we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, the rapture has to happen now, this year. So that's one reason. Another reason is the many signs, the signs that um, Jesus himself has given, and of course other um, prophets throughout the Bible, um, regarding the end of the age, and uh, we see these signs uh, ramping up and converging uh, at an incredible speed. So many things that, um, that we expect to happen, they are happening. And they are happening all at the same time and they are all increasing. Uh, of course, um, very recent, uh, we had this big earthquake again in Morocco. Uh, um, I say again after the earthquake in, in Turkey uh, in the beginning of the year. These are really huge um, events. Um, there is this storm uh, in Libya, which is also very strange. Uh, when have you ever heard of that before? And I'm told that the storm is called Daniel, which is the, uh, the judgment of God. Um, but of course, there is the ongoing war, the rumors of uh, war. Um, there uh, are increasing space events, um, meteor impacts and uh, um, near-Earth um, flybys of, of big meteors. Um, so there's a lot happening around us um, uh, and also in society. And there is, of course, the, the, the rapid uh, moral decay of um, every fabric of our society. But we also see that the whole uh, infrastructure that uh, is foretold to be in place during the tribulation period, which we often call the beast system, that this is also um, uh, taking shape, or it, I would say it's already in place. It just needs to be activated. Yeah, um, we see this uh, rapid uh, introduction of digital IDs. Um, they're starting here uh, this month, a uh, few weeks away from now, I think it's 25th of September with the digital ID here in Greece. Um, and I wrote about all these things in the, my recent newsletter, uh, so I don't want to go into this uh, now in detail. But um, 
also mention the CBDC, eh, the Central Bank Digital Currency, uh, digital euro, the digital dollar, they are ready. They are waiting to be activated, you can say. And there is also um, uh, an all-encompassing uh, world um, uh, currency, a digital currency by the Bank of International Settlements that's called the Unicoin. And um, all these things are ready to be rolled out. And especially these, I mentioned these, digital ID and digital currencies, because this is um, a very important part of the uh, mark of the beast. Uh, it leans on these two things, um, as we can read in Revelation 13, verse 18. But there's a third component to it, and that has to do with the biology, the impact it has on our biology. So there's more to it uh, in the sense of... Um, invasive um, technology, nanotechnology, um, but also uh, implanted um, um, devices uh, for interfacing with the outside world, um, which the Bible mentions particularly in the right hand and the forehead. Um, the EU has uh, approved the Digital Services Act, um, which is a, a law with which they can um, um, basically censor and control uh, um, all um, content on the internet, whether it's on social media or on private websites or corporate websites. And they can uh, then uh, order the uh, owner or even the host to take down this material or entire website. Uh, it's far, far reaching. Uh, but you can imagine if this had been in place during the past few years, um, what would have happened to many channels and uh, outlets and, and websites. And uh, I'm afraid uh, that the next such uh, event is just around the corner. The UN states then that uh, we need seven years of accelerated transformative action um, to achieve the SDGs, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. So when you see seven years, the alarm bells go, go off. Of course, it's the seven years from now until 2030. And this, uh, this summit of the UN, it takes place also uh, this month. Um, so again, I speak about these things in the newsletter, also with links um, to the different websites where you can find more information about this. Back to where we are. Is this the appointed time? Um, it could very well be. Uh, in a way, I, I would say it would, it would surprise me if it's not because of, of how everything is converging and it is very hard to imagine that um, things would go on like this for another year or who knows how long. Um, um, Yom Teruah. Uh, Teruah is... Um, means blast or shout. We, we say Yom Teruah, we call it Feast of Trumpets, but it's actually the, the day of the shout or the day of the blast, um, Yom Teruah. And actually this channel has uh, derived its name from that last trumpet blast. That word blast is Teruah, the last Teruah, the last shout of the trumpet. We find the word um, also in the New Testament, uh, in particular in Matthew 25, when it speaks about the parable of the ten virgins. Uh, there was a shout in the night. It's a blast. It can be a shout from a, a voice, a human voice, or from from God or from an angel. But it can also be a blast from a trumpet or a shofar. Which, by the way, is not the same. We covered that also. Um, so I want to leave you with a short video. It's about seven minutes. Uh, that I made in um, previous years about Yom Teruah showing how this points to the rapture. Uh, I will include it in this video so you can just uh, uh, sit back and continue to watch. Uh, except if you want it in Dutch, then I will put in the description a link to the Dutch version of that video. And if you want more information on, uh, on Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah, um, Feast of Trumpets, uh, I would like to uh, invite you to go to the website. Um, there you can click on videos 
and you can search by feast and if you do that and you type uh, Terua or uh, Rosh Hashanah then you will see automatically it will suggest um, the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Terua, Rosh Hashanah. You click on that and you have an overview of all the videos that are available on that uh, topic. Uh, and while you're there, look also at the section of uh, handouts. There uh, are a lot of um, uh, handouts, material that you can use for your study and um, as reference material. In particular, I want to point to uh, the biblical calendar, which is a circular calendar um, that shows you the, um, the different months on the Hebrew or on the biblical calendar and the place of the feasts in there along with some verses and other information. And I want to point you to uh, the biblical timeline uh, that's uh, here printed. It's, it's um, also to be downloaded and you can print it like I did here uh, as a series of uh, sheets and then uh, tape them together. And you have an overview of the entire uh, biblical year. Uh, you see at the top the, the moon uh, phases and then uh, it will show you the months, the days of the month, and uh, the different feasts throughout the year, how they um, uh, have been uh, fulfilled or foreshadowed in the time of Moses, fulfilled in the time of Jesus, how they relate to the biblical wedding, how they were reflected in the tabernacle, and down below it gives them uh, some references of events that happened on these particular uh, days or appointed times. And uh, if you want uh, to just view that, there is also a video uh, called The Pillar of Time, which is an animation that shows you uh, also all these things and how uh, beautifully the different appointed times have been fulfilled throughout history. Uh, enough material um, to look at, to consider, to ponder on as we um, anticipate the call of our Lord Jesus to come up uh, to heaven and um, of course uh, what's most important is uh, that we are ready uh, to go um, that our lamps are filled and um, our uh, hearts and minds are all set on him so without further ado i will uh, show this video now and um, well we either see each other here in the next video or up there Amen. After the long dry summer, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, is the first festival to be celebrated in the fall season. It is a wake-up call. The trumpets are blowing. In fact, the trumpets are sounded daily in the 30 days prior to the feast, starting at the first of the sixth month. It is a time of reflection and repentance. God declares the feast in Leviticus 23 verses 23 through 25 it says there and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel saying in the seventh month in the first day of the month shall you have a Sabbath a memorial of blowing of trumpets a holy convocation you shall do no servile work therein but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord no reason is given as to why this feast is celebrated, only that it is like a Sabbath and that the shofar is to be blown. The purpose of the feast is a mystery. It's the start of the civil new year, but there is no reason for its celebration or memorial in the biblical context. As a wake-up call, one might wonder, wake up to what? Just look at the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25. They have all fallen asleep, and in the middle of the night there is a cry, a shout, 
in Hebrew at the Ruah. Wake up! The groom has arrived. He has come to take his bride home. In Matthew 25 verse 13 it then says, Stay alert, for you do not know the day or the hour. Isn't that interesting? Yom Teruah is also referred to as the day of which no one knows the day or the hour. The hidden day, Yom HaKese. The reason being that it starts on a new moon, the beginning of the month. And a new moon is invisible. So you only know that it was a new moon when you observe the waxing crescent the next day. Traditionally, two witnesses had to observe that. Depending on the weather conditions, that could even be another day later. For that reason, two days are reserved for the festival. It's also called a long day. So we have these ingredients. A mystery, an unknown day, an unknown time, a shout, a trumpet. With that in mind, let's read what Paul wrote. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And then to the Thessalonians, in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We find all ingredients in the revealing of the rapture of the church, the snatching away of the bride. Paul speaks of the last trumpet, the final shofar. This is typically the tekiah gedola. It's connected to the Feast of Trumpets. It's sometimes mistakenly connected to the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation, but that is a judgment trumpet and not a wake-up call. That uh, trumpet in the book of Revelation is the last of a series of seven. It's not the Tekiah Gedola. On top of that, when Paul wrote uh, his letters to the Corinthians and the Thessalonians, the revelation was not yet given to John. The seven trumpets were unknown. Now, Paul also speaks about a moment and the twinkling of an eye. And these are two different things. A moment means it will happen fast, suddenly. The twinkling of an eye is a Hebrew idiom meaning at even, in the twilight. We find the same in Genesis 24, verse 62, when Isaac sees Rebekah approaching. It says there it is at even. In Hebrew that could be rendered as in the twinkling of the eye. When Isaac, the son, leaves the well, the well called Be'er Lacharoi, uh, uh, freely translated uh, his father's presence, he left his father's presence in order to meet his bride halfway and to take her after that to his father's house as we can read in the remainder of the chapter. Finally we see the same ingredients in Revelation 4 verse 1 when John is called into heaven. There is a voice, there is a trumpet, heaven is opened and John is suddenly in heaven. And it happens after the seven churches are addressed in chapters 2 and 3 at the end of the church age and at the beginning of the seven year tribulation period. Note that there also are seven days after Yom Teruah or Rosh Hashanah until the day of atonement when the high priest which our high priest is Yeshua returns out of the Holy of Holies pointing to the second coming. The trumpet is sounding. Wake up and have your lamp filled and burning. 